Indy, why does the floor move? Give me your torch. A uh, tradition that we have in the indie series is one of creepy crawlies, of things that makes you shudder and get a little creeped out. The first one we had snakes, the second one we had bugs, and the third one we had rats. Logical fear, and it is a fear of snakes, and uh, so it it had to be part of the story. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? When I came up with the idea that he had to have a phobia, and the phobia should be snakes, uh, I only said snakes because I had just recently read a list of the top ten phobias. I think snakes was number three. And I think public speaking was number one. And I remember bringing that to the story meeting when we met with Larry Kast and said, why don't we give him a phobia, he's afraid of snakes. So I was always looking for opportunities to bring the snakes back. I've seen people that just cannot be on the set when we bring a snake on. They just can't physically allow themselves to suffer what's going on in their bodies and they just remove themselves. Feel this, feel this, feel this. It's, it's, it's like kosher uh, delicatessen food. <laughs> I think I was able to suggest snakes as Indy's phobia because I'm fine with snakes. I lived in, I was raised in Arizona. We had snakes, you know, in our, in our house. You know, they would just come out of the desert and somehow get into the house. So snakes were something that I never had a problem with. Mike Culling was the animal trainer on the, on the first three movies. And I've had the great pleasure of working on the last two. And of course, Mike Culling's work with the snakes on Indiana 1 is the envy of every reptile enthusiast around the world. That is the, the stamp, that is the one, that's the golden orb, that's what everyone is striving for, to get that one job. Well, honestly, when I read the script, I never really thought about it one way or another. It seems a funny thing to say, but I mean, it didn't occur to me that we were gonna have to have like thousands of snakes around us. Um, and I think maybe the first time I said something to Stephen about it, he said, oh, well, you know, we're gonna have these mechanical snakes and it's, you know, and once we started shooting the film, it became clear right away the mechanical snakes didn't work, that they didn't look like real snakes. And so they had to immediately abandon that. And all of a sudden, while we were at Elstree Studio in London, this call went out for like, you know, four or 5,000 more snakes. Get on it right now and get as many snakes here as you can within the shortest period of time. He says we get 5,000 from Harbor in two or three days. And all of these snake wranglers started to come in, and suddenly there were thousands and thousands of snakes on the set. We had dozens of these uh, containers full of all manner of snakes. We were working with, I think, as many as eight, ten thousand 10,000 snakes. Thousands of which, by the way, escaped each day through cracks and crevices. So they were constantly being renewed. A lot of them were quite harmless snakes. They weren't even true snakes. A lot of what we worked with were, are, were actually lizards that are called glass snakes. And you can literally stick your finger in their mouth and they won't bite you. Some of them are called glass snakes. They're actually a legless lizard. And they're actually a lizard. They get about three feet long. It's a European one. They get about that fat and about three feet long. And uh, they are a lizard because they blink. Snakes don't blink. <laughs> so you look at it and say, is it a snake? Blink. It's a lizard. We're okay. We're going to live. Now, this is the Burmese python. And uh, this is the same species that actually came out through the, uh, the skull. This one weighs only about 25, maybe 30 pounds. But after 10 minutes of holding this snake, it gets a lot heavier. 
Pythons are actually very nice to work with. They're pretty docile by nature. They're most of them being homegrown, they're born in captivity. And we had some cobras that had to be handled very, very carefully. People think you can detox cobras, but you can't. The only time I really felt a little bit in danger was when we had the cobras on the set. And you saw everybody get very serious. And we had to have the anti-venom there and an ambulance. And everybody uh, really paid attention when the cobras came on the set. The big event is the, the cobra that pops up in front of Indiana Jones. I mean, I think that is just fabulous. <laughs> Cobras are my favorite snakes. These are the one snake that says, you know, surprise. <laughs> Everybody hates that. They love it, but they hate it. But cobras are very polite. They'll stand up and tell you I'm here. And you kind of respect that. They're probably one of the easiest snakes to work with if you have a cobra that wants to hold his ground. There are cobras that hold their ground and they'll hood up and stand and stare at you. That's the one that's perfect for what you need, especially for movies. Everywhere you move, the cobra will follow you. So you can see the back of him, and then you walk around behind the camera, and he'll follow you. And you get a bit closer, and he goes, like that. And if you don't take the warning, they will kill you. Yeah. Indiana Jones, the first one, of course, they use spiders as well. Another one of these freaky animals that are on the top of the list of uh, scary things that people don't like. And uh, spiders are actually um, interesting to work with. And uh, they're actually very delicate. First of all, spider tools. Aha. And I will just take this one right here. That's a shed skin. Here we go, here we go, there we go. And that is what steps out. Now he's a Mexican South American tarantula. You blow on his butt and he goes that direction. And you have to be very careful. You can't put too many spiders together and let them get comfortable because they cannibalize each other. There's something on the ground. Few us different fortune cookies. In the Temple of Doom, of course. So the snakes, they went with bugs. Another one of those things that really scare the bejesus out of a lot of people. And there's just some horrendous looking bugs in there. That's no cookies. One of them was actually a Malaysian stick insect. It's like, they're called a leaf bug as well. It won't bite you, but it looks like it should hurt you terribly. It's a big bug. There's black-headed centipedes, which really hurt, and they're very fast. And there's tons of stuff. There's Madagascar cockroaches, beetles of every assorted type. Get some of that. Okay, action on the bugs. I would say the most difficult of the three elements, snakes, bugs, or rats, were actually the bugs, because they're totally uncontrollable. But the bugs, they, they did creep you out, because they have those little things that get down your back and they get in your hair, and it just doesn't feel too good. And cut, 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 cut. Okay, run in there, Mike. Well, the problem with bugs is, you know, they're fast and they're small and they can escape. So it was very hard for us to keep this, the bugs in the confines of the set, the very small set we had built. You know, the bugs would literally be 25% less every day we shot. And they would escape under the real estate of Elstree Studios and then they'd eventually get into the, probably the ecosystem of the surrounding communities. And by the last day of shooting, we only had 25% of our bugs left. Okay, we gotta get Robert down here. We don't have enough bugs to make the scene work. It's actually quite funny, because uh, people say, I want the bug to come from here to there, and go up there, and it's like, you get, it's a bug. <laughs> it's got the brain the size of a grain of sand, if you're lucky, you know. You can actually manipulate them a little bit, if you touch them on the, on the back, sometimes they keep moving, and you're pretty much stuck right there. <laughs> In uh, The Last Crusade, I was actually hired on as one of the reptile wranglers. They're moving so we pan down with yeah, you. So there is movement. So we delivered, uh, I think it was like four or five alligators. I got this guy here trying to eat me. <laughs> 14 or 1500 snakes, giant lizards, giant tortoises. This is all in the train. And of course, then we turned up with the lion. And this is where we put River Phoenix, set him in a box, and we put a couple of thousand rubber snakes underneath them. And he was sitting on a bucket with snakes all over him. And then on uh, rolling, I poured a thousand garter snakes on him. And then on action, I dumped another four or five hundred on his head. And these are garter snakes, they're like this real wiggly little boogers, they're all over the place. And we had like nine people catching snakes off the camera, you know. And he goes, ah! <laughs> it's a great job. <laughs> Thank you.
On uh, the last crusade, they had uh, rats, tons and tons of rats in the crypt, you know, all running through the water and stuff. Can we put a few on that skeleton crawling around the guy hanging down on his yeah. head, neck, and rib cage? Yeah. I like rats, and we actually bred those rats in captivity. Those were like a couple thousand rats that were literally bred for, you know, reasons of health. The rats were bred just to be in that one scene. Uh, for the raiders, I was asked to get 20,000 snakes. And for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, I was asked to get 50,000 bugs. And for this one, the last crusade, I was asked to get 1,000 of these sewer rats, which gradually changed over the months until the start of filming in June 88. We then had to have 5,000. Put them on the floor and go that way. <laughs> rats are very, very easy. They're very intelligent. Within three weeks, you can have rats running from A to B over a period of uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 feet to a buzzer. It's like calling the dog, dinner, clang, clang, the dog comes in, rats do the same thing. So the rats work for their dinner, their lunch, their breakfast, snacks in between. And if you have the set, if the set is built, you just practice on the set every day. You just go down there and you do this same routine probably five, six times a day. We gave them bugs, snakes, and now rats. What do we do for Indy 4? <laughs> And in the fourth one, we have a new added element that is in line with the other three movies. But that's all I can tell you. Well, I don't know if it's much bigger and much scarier. It, it could be smaller and much scarier. I don't know. It's up to the audience. We just throw this stuff out there and hope that some of it sticks to the wall.